and bishop c2. And this is actually good for black. This is actually good for black. These pawns are actually quite nice after c4. So he plays knight d4. And you play knight to c5, defend this guy. Oops. Amazingly enough, king f7 was actually played in 11 games. It has a good score, but probably not by good players. So bishop b3. And castle is played a lot, or just e5. So after e5, knight f3, bishop b7. So e5, knight f3, bishop b7, you're just going to castle. You have very nice pressure on this e4 pawn. So, and it's hard for him to amass the same pressure on this e5 pawn. Papa. So yeah, Papa is an ardent practitioner of these lines, so he can chime in with useful advice whenever he feels necessary. But so this this is fine for black. And theory shows it's fine for black too. So if they play e3 first, rather than bishop g5, you have this idea of playing takes b5, a6, c5, and bishop b7. And then they're going to be putting a pawn on e4, and then this bishop on b7 exerts pressure on this pawn on e4. Does that make sense? No, it's a lot of arrows, but... Um, so that's the idea in these e3 type openings. Or e3 types, you know, systems. So... Um, so yeah, that about covers that. Is there anything specific in either of the lines I went over that... You guys want me to, uh, check out? <laughs> your password. Uh, okay, let me see what's going on on Chess Cube while you guys figure out if you have anything you want to ask me. Because Spaz said he wanted me to check out his game too or something. Thanks, Dow, for the shout out seven minutes ago. Uh, where's I see? Can I minimize that? Chess Cube. Can I check out your last game you said? We had to try sport the one you won. All right, uh, friends. Party rock. You're playing two games though. The one, you got checkmated. <laughs> Let me see. Watch my friends' games. Mm, Party rock Bibescu, I guess. <laughs> oh, you're so crazy. And it's bad, this game? Uh, okay, well, he hung his queen. Alright, I don't know why you're showing me that. Nice, a nice game, Pyro. Okay. So anything else? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. Where are the black stones? All I see is white stone. Oh, it was fine. It was fine.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the... That's like a botvinic, isn't it? So my C5 is going bad. Oh. Yeah, if you play C5 too early, the problem is uh, black can play uh, E5 and kind of break open, break up this pawn structure, and then the C5 pawn becomes weak. Like, white kind of likes the tensions there. So if you play C5 too early, this E5 push becomes a lot easier to to do. Because right now when the pawns are like this, like, if if black plays, so like, say, okay, so E, say E3, knight D7, say bishop D3, whatever. Uh, bishop e7, or a castle, queen c7 or something. So the idea is, um, so now you're not now now I'm starting to play e5, I guess. So, but if you play c5, it makes e5 that much stronger. Whereas, uh, if you leave this tension here, then if I try to play e5, then you know this pawn is loose. So say like queen b3 for example. So now if I play e5, now you can just take this. Whereas this pawn was on c5 after e5, now I'm threatening e4, and now if you take this, I take back with a knight, and now this pawn's going to be hanging at the end. So, I mean, it's just an example, but, I mean, basically, uh, it just gives something that black can chip away at. And it makes it so that this pawn's not attacking this pawn, so now you're free to move this pawn. Whereas sometimes this pawn will need support from both these pawns. So... So p pushing c5 in some positions is okay, but if you do it too early, it allows black to basically get e5 in for free. And then it should be equal. Or black should be slightly better even. Because his, his pieces will have more freedom, so. Uh, sorry, Spinal. Maybe you can do both. Maybe you can do both. You can play some video games while you're watching me. <laughs> 